Are you ready to hustle? I need to hustle, hustle. Welcome to The Hustle with Justin Harrison, the ultimate podcast for money, motivation, and inspiration. So in this season of The Hustle, we are focusing in on people's personal finance questions. And today we have a young hustler with us from Durban, and uh, he's got some questions lined up for me. So Joshua, welcome to The Hustle. Uh, let's jump right in. What's your first question? Okay, so my first question is, should I get a credit card when I turn 18? So it's quite a difficult question to answer because, first of all, from a logical perspective, yes, you should to grow and build your credit profile over time. However, a credit card is what I like to refer to as an instrument of mass destruction when it comes to personal finance. And so I would highly encourage you first to make a lot of money. I would encourage you to work strictly with the money that you have available in your account, work strictly on cash and a cash basis. And once you have developed the discipline of not using debt as an instrument to basically do everything that you need to do in life, then slowly start looking at credit cards. So I would probably say you're better off waiting, figure out how to really use cash effectively. And listen, there'll always be a credit card waiting for you whenever you're ready. There's no, there's no pressure to go out and get it immediately. The banks want to sell you money, believe me. So at the end of the day, I think the most important thing to, to figure out is the discipline around money. And unfortunately, unsecured lending and especially loans and stuff like credit card that you can roll debt very easily, there's a, there's a very big opportunity for people to fall into a financial trap. And so my honest advice to any youngster is hold off on the credit cards, figure out how to work in cash, figure out how the financial system works. If you don't yet understand things like fractional reserve banking, if you don't understand leverage within the financial system, if you don't understand the risks of unsecured lending, if you don't understand the interest rates and the compound effects of interest rates, uh, then I think you're probably better off learning to stay in cash for a while longer. And the excuse that you need a credit card to perform transactions is no longer valid because you get debit cards today that pretty much give you the exact same features and functionality. The only difference with a credit card, why it becomes beneficial over time, is that there's a lot of reward systems that you can tap into. And the only reason, the only good reason to have a credit card is because you want to use the reward system. Um, other than that, most people are accessing, accessing credit cards for debt, and that's entirely the wrong reason. So my advice mm. is hold off. Okay. Um, and then my second question is, should I save? Because um, with inflation and stuff like that, is it, is it still valid to save now? Or no? So, so let's, let's talk about your age first, because I think this is a very interesting question. So what is your age currently? I'm 16 okay. currently. So if at 16 you understand what inflation is, you're already about 90% ahead of everybody else in your peer group, probably 99% ahead. So great question. The fact that you understand inflation is really important. So I tell adults this all the time. If you're putting your money in the bank and you're earning 8% interest in a money market account, but you're out mm. there paying uh, inflation, then the real rates of inflation when you go to the shops is not what's quoted by the government at a CPI uh, mm. index if you go today and you spend 100 rand and go a year from now and spend 100 rand your 100 rand is going to buy you roughly about 10 to 15 percent less depending on the product right so it it doesn't make yeah. sense to save money in the bank right so saving money in the bank is perhaps the biggest misconception around wealth and it's it's something that typically the middle class do without really understanding money. It's, it's a lesson that's been handed down to them by their parents. Mm. It's a lesson that's been handed down by grandparents. And the financial system encourages saving as well. Now, I'm not saying mm. that you shouldn't spend less than you earn because there's a very big uh, misunderstanding when it comes to this. You need to understand that spending less than you earn is a prerequisite. The question is, what do you do with the excess income? So you definitely mm. need to build up capital. So for me, saving is about building up capital in the short term. Anything from you know zero months to a year, you build up capital, that's saving. Now, whether you get a rate of return mm. on it is not actually important. Whether you get 5% or 6%, it's really not that important. What is important is that you develop the, the, the habit of saving money. Now the question is, mm. what do you do with the money when you've got it? Wealthy people understand 
intrinsically that you put your money in the bank, not only is there risk in the financial system because the banks might not actually have the mm. money that you that you're putting in the bank, right? And the second thing yes. is, if you look at the rate of return, what wealthy people understand is that you have to deploy cash into something useful. And the biggest misconception mm. is that money is a store of wealth or that money represents wealth. Money is a medium of exchange. It's how I pay for services from you and you pay for services from me. It's a medium of exchange. Mm. But understand that it is not an asset. It is not a vehicle to hold money and to to do something useful for, with it. So to in order to really make your money work, you have to deploy capital. You have to take your cash that you've saved and put it in an asset or an instrument that is going to generate a return above inflation. And when I say to people, when you invest, you don't, you must never invest to make money. You must invest mm. to stay ahead of inflation. So if you've got a million rand today, the objective is not to turn it into two million rand through investing. The objective is to beat inflation every single year so that the hundred rand that mm. you have in your pocket today buys you the same value a year from now. And okay. What you need to understand about the financial system is the financial system broadly throws terms at people. And so people think that, that having cash in the bank is a measure of wealth. When somebody tells me they've got, they've got money in the bank, an excessive amount of money, I already know that they're actually not wealthy. I already understand mm. that they don't understand the financial system. So you have to go and find instruments. Now, the second part is understanding, and I said something very controversial that a lot of people don't catch on to. I said that, if you take your money and you invest it to make money, you're doing the wrong thing. Mm. So the question is, where yeah. do you go to make money? You have to earn money. That's the way you make money. You earn money and then you save it and mm. then you deploy it. That's the missing formula here. Mm. No, 100%. I agree with that. Eh? So my, sec my third question ties into my second one. So you talked about investing instead of saving something around yeah. there, right? So... Should I invest in Bitcoin or should I invest in or, or, or is Bitcoin the future or is things like gold, platinum, silver, physical things uh, the future? What, what's your thoughts on that? Great question. And, and I wish more 16 year olds were asking critical questions like this. So, look, um, Bitcoin is a fantastic uh, revolution in the financial space. But more importantly, actually, the blockchain technology is a complete revolution. So I'm going to answer this in sort of three parts to really break it down and make sense of it. So I don't consider any cryptocurrency to be an investment. To me, an investment does three critical things. Number one, it guarantees the current value. That means it's not going to lose a lot of value, some kind of capital guarantee or at least a measure of guarantee in place. Secondly, it Ooh. has future value above what it currently is. In other words, the value of the asset appreciates over time, guaranteed, right? And the third mm -hmm. thing is it has to have actual utility. It has to create cash flow. It needs to provide something of value in the world where it generates cash flow for it to be useful. So there's a, there's a mm -hmm. lot of things to understand as we unpack this. So first of all, let's talk about cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency, I mm -hmm. think, is the future, I think most countries are cottoning on to the fact that controlling the monetary supply with physical paper, it just doesn't make sense. The other thing is we've evolved on our monetary sort of journey in life. We went from trading, barter, we then went to gold and silver coins, mm. we then went to paper money, because all of that was inefficient. I mean, to carry around bags of gold became inefficient. So then we went to carrying around bags of paper. That became inefficient. So we went to digital money, which is what you see when you log into mm. your bank account. The next evolution, yes. cryptocurrency is basically just decentralizing that. It's putting the power back in the hands of the people. Unless, of course, you're investing mm. into CBDCs, which is an entirely different conversation. But yeah. in essence, the blockchain I'm a big believer in. I can't tell you with absolute okay. certainty, and anybody who says they can is totally full of shit, that a specific cryptocurrency is going to be the one that does well. So I don't consider cryptocurrency to be an investment at this point. I think it's highly speculative. I think it's like going to the casino okay. and taking a bet. Uh, for everybody who's made money in crypto, there's twice as many people who've lost money. And the reality of it is, if you look at cryptocurrency, and you break it down, there is no intrinsic value to it. Now, somebody will argue that the value in Bitcoin 
which makes it a store of wealth is the fact that there's a limited amount of supply. Yes, that is true to a degree, but you must remember you can trade Satoshis, which is fractional pieces of a Bitcoin. And fractional pieces of Bitcoin increases the supply infinitely. So is it really limited, right? The, the second thing to understand is that it's not underpinned by any actual real world utility yet until you can actually go and physically on an everyday basis, go down to your coffee shop, buy bread and milk, those sort of things. It doesn't yet have proper utility. So if you look at the number of cryptocurrency projects in existence, there's currently about three to 400 new cryptos that come onto the market every single month at the moment. And to, to try and figure out which one's going to win, I think is a very, very, very difficult um, equation to measure out. So I would say hmm. Bitcoin and any cryptocurrency is not an investment. It is speculation. And you should never put a significant amount of your wealth into crypto. So I have a crypto portfolio. I take the top 10 cryptos mm. and then I take a couple of the, the very bottom because we're swinging for the fences, right? Hoping it will turn into something big. But I don't put money in that I'm not prepared to lose. So that's the first answer. The second answer, second part of the question is, should you focus more on physical assets like gold, silver, etc.? Without a question. There's no doubt about it. Gold as a store of wealth is going to do very well. Silver is going to do very well because it has real-world utility. It gets used in manufacture. Mm. It's not just something that looks pretty. It's something that is physically used in manufacture. And we're having to go deeper into the Earth's crust to find these resources so they have to become more expensive over time. But mm. gold, silver, platinum, all lack one of the three keys in the investments I was telling you about, and that is that it doesn't have cash flow. So yes, you put your money into gold, silver, or platinum today. Hopefully, and logically, it should be worth more in the next five to 10 years. No question about it. Yeah. So it is a great store of wealth, and it has a place in a portfolio. But you must understand that it is not cash flowing. And this is why I like buying shares in companies, because I can read the balance sheets, I can read the income statement, I can see if the company's profitable. And more specifically, I like buying stocks that provide a dividend because irrespective of whether the stock price goes up or down, you continue to earn mm. a share of the profits. And to me, I'm always going to have a major portion of my portfolio invested in businesses that cash flow positively that make money. So portfolio should be a little bit in crypto, uh, a decent amount as a store of wealth in gold, silver, and platinum. And then the majority should be deployed into assets that generate you a physical return, like investing in companies, like getting involved in crowdfunded projects, like buying a share of a farm, you know, buying, buying livestock, buying into a portion mm -hmm. of a solar farm. There's lots of options out there. But the point I'm making is the bulk of your portfolio should be in something that ticks all three of those boxes. And that really is the key to understanding money. Okay. No, perfect, yeah. Makes sense? I agree with that, 100%. Yes, 100%, yeah. So listen, I think those are great questions, especially coming from a young man like yourself. You're obviously very switched on. Uh, I'm going to leave you with my last parting words of advice, which is never use earned income to go and buy the stuff that you want. Only use earned income to buy the stuff that you need. So if you're going out there and buying a fancy Porsche of earned income, you don't understand money. What you need to do is mm. you need to use your earned income to invest so you generate passive income and use the passive income to pay for the stuff you want. Mm. Got it, yeah, 100%. If you're enjoying and finding value from this season of the Hustle Podcast, please leave us a rating on your favorite podcasting app and be sure to hit that subscribe or follow button to make sure that you never miss an episode of The Hustle. Stay motivated by The Hustle. Talkers talk, but hustlers hustle. Find more episodes at ecr.co.za or your favorite podcast app.